we haven't really made a, a proper introduction for you before, uh, despite you being, you know, one of the earliest employees of Apollo and obviously having a massive impact on, on everything we do. So, Yago, if you uh, don't mind, who are you and what do you do at Apollo? Maybe you try it. I'm the product designer, I guess. Uh, so I'm the one helping a lot to uh, give shape to the to the ideas that he comes with uh, and yeah we usually start with concepts based on his uh, briefings hmm. and just develop them and yeah I don't know hmm. so you, you you mean like the the process is sort of Elwa has this idea uh, but he, you know, doesn't really know how to put it into something visual, a model perhaps, and he comes to you and then you you create the design uh, that gives Awa and the team something to look at, basically. Is that more or less how it works? Yeah, it's uh, teamwork. Uh, he, he's the one that uh, knows the industry, the one that uh, has the, the, knows what would... Uh, working for future products and I just help uh, trying to give them uh, a, a, a form or, or I don't know to apply my my knowledge in the industrial design mm -hmm. field uh, to to try to come up with nice uh, visually nice products that uh, match those ideas to try to make this industry better i guess and cool and, and you mentioned uh in the industrial design there it's is that is that what your background is would you say yes i studied industrial design in fact when i started working for apollo i was uh when you guys contacted me uh i was finishing my master thesis in car design that would uh, is the field that i come from and yeah, uh, suddenly the, the scooter industry, uh, it started to be something more, um, how do you say it, uh, mainstream. Mm -hmm. And I, I had I, the idea of uh, making a, it was during the, the lockdown and I was working on it. Every project I was working on was about cars and things like that. And I, I just wanted to make something different to to add to my portfolio and, and my Behance, uh, uh, yeah, digital portfolio. And I thought, why not doing a scooter? And I took a Dyson as a brand for it, not I something. Remember. Yeah. So I made that scooter like in. Two three weeks, I I uh, posted the the project, and I, I guess there's uh, where you found me, and then we talked and started working together. So it's been like three years now. Yeah, that's pretty. It's pretty crazy. I mean, if anyone's listening to this, um, just open Google and search for Dyson electric scooter, and the first website you'll see is uh, Behance. That was the uh, the project that Yago posted, like you said, three years ago now. Um, yeah. And, you know, the, the scooter, I think, looks a lot more normal now. But three years ago, when the standard was Chinese Frankenstein scooters with cables, screws, bolts, uh, you know, mismatched parts and colors, that was the standard. You know, we were at the time selling the uh, Apollo, old Apollo City, old Apollo Explorer, old Apollo Pro, uh, yeah. the Sandris lineup, the kind of T8, T9 and T10, uh, as they're called. And we saw this scooter, we were like, this is uh, this is different. This is this is what we want for Apollo to be like in the future. Um, so yeah, we got in touch with you, and the rest is history, as they say, right? Uh, yes. Uh, sometimes when you come from a different field and don't have any knowledge or experience on the field you try to enter, it's nice because different things and and newer and not seen before things come up and and sometimes it's it's interesting so maybe the simplicity that i try to apply to that dyson do you hear me now i think it we lose connection there yeah uh, just for a second yeah okay so 
I was saying that maybe that simplicity that I tried to apply to the Dyson scooter was part of the base that I applied to when we tried to give shape to the to the Apollo Pro. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and, I mean, and everything is related. And, and I think that, you know, um, a lot of people might be looking at the Dyson now and, and perhaps seeing some similarities between, like you said, the Apollo Pro, uh, the new Apollo Explorer, the new Apollo Rover, uh, the complete seamless, look, right? The, the no screws, uh, hidden cables, integrated uh, brakes. A lot of that is, in fact, part of our DNA today. So it's, it's really cool to see that, mm. you know, wh whether it's us that sought you out because of how clean your design language was or whether it was you who brought that over to Apollo um, is, is irrelevant. I think it's, it's important that we found this kind of common aesthetic in, in products uh, that we were able to bring to life with the Apollo Pro and soon the subsequent products. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, I tried to mix that design language that it's uh, cleaner with the design language that we had at that moment the pro was the the pro no the phantom was the most advanced scooter that we had i remember that my first project was designing the the grip tape for, <laughs> for the top of it uh, just the the graphic design and and the pro was like i didn't want to lose the connection with the phantom so uh the phantom has a super chamfered uh, design and somehow what we tried was to uh, make something new but keeping the connection with that uh, Apollo product that was the the base of our design at that moment so that's yeah. why the the pro looks like cleaner and more simple but it also has that chamfer design that uh, we try to keep we try to keep with the with explore and the rover but in a more uh, in a softer way yeah but the the chamfer design and the simple chamfer uh, with no cables design and it's it's in all of our scooters now so yeah it's it's everything it's connected that's interesting yeah, and that's uh, it's it's something that I think, like I mentioned before, is is now becoming the standard in the in this industry in many ways. I think because um, people are also maturing, the products are maturing, right? Like you don't want a product that looks like a Frankenstein when you can have something that's very neatly integrated and offers a better experience. So it's it's cool to see that trend really taking off because I think it's it's making everyone's product a little bit better um, and yeah, a little it's bit easier to get high. more people too. Yeah. So, so Yago, um, tell me a little bit more about what you've been working on this week and, and recently. I know you were just on vacation, so maybe it wasn't a super uh, super packed uh, couple of days, but uh, more generally than what, what have you been focusing on recently? No, we had uh, things uh, pending from the week when, when I uh, went. Uh, I started holidays, so, so yes, I just... Uh, kept working on the same stuff that is basically uh, revising the, the, the last details for the... Uh, so uh, basically what we are doing right now in terms of uh, design and, and product development is uh, applying the final details to the, to the Explore and the Rover in order to to finish the, the 3D model at the factory to produce the, the new prototypes. And that's part of the process. Uh, it's basically, we send our design ideas through a 3D file uh, and they prepare it to be feasible and, and to be able to produce it. They prepare a 3D model that we receive back and mm. we check that everything looks more or less the same way uh, we proposed. And when then we just uh, uh, confirm or apply new changes until we find the final, uh, we agree with a final mm. uh, a product that is balanced between what we propose and what they say it's possible to make. So yeah. we are always yeah. 
looking for that uh, 50-50. So, so would you say would you say the final products that we usually get from the factory are similar or different from the original design that you propose? Uh, the latest projects are starting to become closer to what we propose from a design perspective because uh, it's been three years working on a scooter. So now the concepts that we prepare, uh, we propose are, uh, we have more knowledge in this field. So the concepts that we propose to the factory are more uh, feasible in a certain way. So everything makes more sense. Uh, we, we keep more realistic pro uh, proportions and, and we keep a lot of things in mind that at the beginning we didn't. So yeah, uh, I think that uh, the more time we spend uh, working on, on, on these products and we can say the difference between the amount of time that we spend designing the pro and and the 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 time that uh, it took to us to to develop the the um, the rover for example it's a difference between 2 years and a few months mm -hmm. so that's that's part of the yeah i think that i i think i, I forgot what was the 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 question can, can you repeat because uh, you, sometimes you it was uh, I was asking to to understand uh, how the final product is different from the design that you originally proposed. And exactly. You said so, yes, it gets closer and closer yeah. over time. Uh, at first, when we started uh, working together, uh, we worked on a few concepts that were too maybe too unreal to develop. But uh, from the pro, I think that uh, the projects have become closer and closer yeah. from from the concept to the final product well, and so then, yes, you know, i would say that I, I wonder if that's also a function of of uh kind of both us getting a little bit more realistic about how scooters work what's possible you know yeah. when we look at the dyson scooter you look at any part of it and now i'm sure you're like that would have never worked you know it's physically impossible to have a brake that's a button and stuff like that so uh, i'm sure you can yeah. kind of look back on the work you did and see what you would have done differently to make it a little bit more uh, manageable for the engineering team to break it down into a, a functional uh, CAD model, right? And likewise, I think yes. the Chinese factory uh, team, um, you know, which consists of obviously a bunch of engineers that take your designs and slice them into into parts, they are also getting better at understanding how to work with your designs and how to actually maintain that similarity between design and, and final execution. So probably a bit of improvement on both sides, I imagine. Yeah, it's it's amazing, and uh, they they are really really good, and the way that we have, uh, I feel that uh, some somehow we 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 are starting to know how to work together uh, in a very efficient way. So yeah, that's the reason why we can have these amazing prototypes in in uh, in just a few weeks sometimes. And yeah, yeah totally. it's amazing. Yeah, and so so before we let you go, yeah, go tell me which uh, which prototype are you the most excited for? Probably the Explore. It's going the to Explore. be a, a super complete product, and I think that it's it's uh, it's getting very close to perfection right now. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think yeah, it's, it's going to be a super product. Yeah. It's also cool to see, you know, like you said, that the pro took us six prototypes, six iterations, and like three years of development, which was obviously just uh, crazy, right? Like it, it, it's mm -hmm. such a long time to develop a product, but I think a lot of it is to do with the fact that it was the first time we ever did IoT. It was the first time we actually produced a scooter with our new controller. It was the first time we, you know, did many of the things that are now kind of standard, right? We had to develop the display, we had to develop the folding mechanism, and now we're just getting to reuse a lot of the same components on the Explore and on the Rover. So um, yeah. obviously that accelerates the development speed and, and time required. Um, so you think that the, I suppose it's the V2 of the Explorer that we're about to receive. You think that's the final one or that there's going to be one more? Uh, probably there's going to be a third one at least because we always find uh, things to improve. Uh, but I don't know, even the first one was super uh it, it looked like a final product 
-hmm. when you see it and you feel it, uh, I had the opportunity to see it when I was, uh, for a time I, I, I spent in Montreal and, and I don't know, uh, they are becoming, if you compare it to the first prototype of the Pro, for example, <laughs> and it looked that, like a final product. So the second one is going to be amazing. I'm sure of that. The the closest to the final product. It could be the, thir the third, could be the, the last one, probably. We'll see. Cool. Great, Aga. Well, um, what you made. Sorry. What's that? What you mentioned is interesting because it's like the, the pro took a lot of time to develop, but it's like uh, big car brands like Mercedes that uh, they release their uh, S class and from there, all that technology uh, they apply it to, yeah. to smaller models are, and you know, so here somehow we, we crack it. That's the way you say it. Uh, a few things that that like the throttles, the the lats, the folding mechanism, everything, and the fact uh, we are applying that to these models uh, makes things super uh, makes makes things easier, and and I think that it's a good uh, design philosophy because we we establish like a connection between the different uh, products. Yeah, and yeah, it's super interesting to work like that. Yeah, we gotta we gotta make your background the uh, final lineup of all three Apollo scooters, you know, so that you can yeah. always just reference it in any point in time. But uh, Yago, yeah, thank you so much. Um, it, you. It's pretty great to uh, learn a little bit more about what you do and uh, you know what you've been focusing on. Uh, I'm sure everyone watching this will have a lot of questions for you, so so keep an eye out for when this video drops next week, and uh, we would love to see you in the comments. Okay. Um, and for anyone who hasn't seen it yet, we highly recommend you check out the V1 walkthrough of the Explore that Yago was just describing. Um, mm -hmm. And then recently we just dropped the V2 of the Rover as well. Uh, so please take a look at those two to have a better context uh, on, on what Yago has been describing. Uh, otherwise, Yago, any you know final thoughts, any parting words before we let you go? I don't know. Thank you for letting me be a part of this. And okay, so I hope you... I don't know. Hope you guys uh, like the the products to come. And I don't know. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Ego, and uh, we'll bye, see bye. you uh, again very very soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.